Well, it's my great pleasure this morning uh, to welcome a good friend of Brookhouse's from Malaysia. It's Patrick Liu. Morning, Patrick, or evening to you, I, I assume. Yeah, good morning, Mickey. Yeah, and Patrick actually runs a, a football academy in Malaysia called First Eleven. Uh, just wonder if, uh, Patrick, first question, how many, how many players have you actually got in your system? Okay, uh, we are considered quite a new uh, football club or academy. Uh, started in 2016 and uh, at the moment we have about 400 players. Okay, they aged from 6 to 16. Plus one first team uh, for men and also one first team for women. Brilliant. And uh, we basically we have about four centres. That's a, that's a lot of uh, ch uh, children. I just wondered... Uh, from a coaching perspective, uh, you know, what sort of syllabus do you work to? Okay, uh, basically we have a syllabus or program for 12 weeks or three months. So every week we have a topic for the coaches to follow. And uh, basically we have a template for them to, to, to fill in what they're going to do. So as a head coach, I will go through it before their training. So after every training, we will do a reflection on how to improve on the next uh, training. So the, the, the 12 week program will, will include all the basic technique and also some of the tactic also. Basically we cover individual, individual tech, tech, technique and also you're talking about unit technique or tactic and group tactic. So, so I guess a lot of that is, uh, is ball related. Is it important to you, do you think, that uh, all the players should be comfortable with the ball? Yeah, of course. Uh, for you, 12 below normally, uh, or I would say for all the age group, we encourage the coaches start with the ball or begin with the ball from the warm up until the game. You see, so our principle is very simple: the more touches you have, the better you are. There is no shortcut at all. No, I, well, I actually agree with you, but uh, you know, uh, just just looking uh, at that. Is there any strength and conditioning work you do? I mean, I know a lot of your players are between or very young at 11 years old, but as they're getting towards manhood, 16 years old, men's football, are you, are you introducing any strength and conditioning work into them? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, we introduced the conditioning, uh, what I call, uh, more on the U16, all right? Uh, due to our notice for the season or late, it's very short. So no, we don't have any pre-season training, okay? Maybe one or two weeks. So we have to do a lot of in-season training. So maybe in the mid-week, we do physical. And, uh, and uh, during the training, we have uh, weekend training. We have this uh, normal training plus some game strategy. Does it, does we it... also don't, yeah, we don't encourage any physical on the under 12, especially because their body are not fully grown. It might, it might injure them. So, so actually, uh, everything is ball related. Is, is the physical side of it ball related as well? Yes, uh, depending to the topic, but we encourage the coaches try to use a lot of ball. And, and, and uh, Patrick, t tell me a little bit about your facilities. Uh, are, are, you well, are you well stocked in terms of uh, pitches and, uh, and equipment? Uh, we do have a lot of equipment. Uh, on the picture side, it's a big issue. Um, you know, Malaysia, they don't have a lot of, I would say most of the club or academy, they don't have a proper field. They don't own a field, actually. Like us, First Eleven, we don't own a field. We, we, we rented or hired a, a pitch from the school. And most of our centre are based in the school, right? And on top of that, uh, some of the academy here are using the public field. Some of them are not very uh, good in uh, very good in condition. Uh, we are quite worried about them, especially those uh, playing time, whereby some bad pitches will injure the player. You see, so I would say the pitch is the utmost important facility for any club of uh, academy. So, in terms of, uh, is there any plans for First Eleven to uh, to actually acquire any uh, any any grass? or field turf somewhere and, and, and try and improve the, the, uh, the quality of training? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, what happened is we actually, four years ago, we, had, we already have our blueprint or one or a plan to get some investor 
to to pump in some financially uh, to build two two pitches and also a clubhouse. It's similar like St George's Park, but in a smaller scale. Yeah, yeah. All right. So whatever you do, I think for football without a field, there's no football. Though. Now, Patrick, I know uh, speaking to you last week that you've actually uh, experienced St George's Park. What was your opinion of it? Oh, what can I say? It's a wow. One of the best facility I've been to. Uh, we saw a few inside the facility, in the hotel. Super. It's a good place for, 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 for coach education or football training, though. Now, uh, just tell me a little bit about your hopes and aspirations for First Eleven. And uh, uh, do you hope one day you're going to see one of your players that's come through your academy in the EPL? Uh, I hope so. Uh, at the moment, we have a couple of players. One of them are in Serbia, one of them are in French, and uh, they are playing in the lower division or lower tier of our league. Of course, um, it's not easy to play in the UK or, or, or Europe because Malaysia ranking is out of 100, top 100. So we cannot just simply go and play in the top five league in the world. Uh, I think Premier League is one of the top uh, five. And uh, I think this this only way is by playing at least four years in the lower tier before you can go to the Premier League, if yeah. if I'm correct. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So it's good whereby they can experience some different, uh, what I call, I would say more competitive uh, league in Europe or UK. Now, I know you've actually, uh, uh, three of your boys have actually been through the Brookhouse Academy. Uh, sister Mikhail, I think uh, Adam and Zach are already here. Uh, yeah. Have they spoken four. to you? Have they spoken to you about Brookhouse and and what we offer? Uh, once a while they will talk to me about their 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 experience, or sometimes you call them, check how how are they doing. I mean, there's different kind of story. Okay. Uh, I think I think they love the place because of football. Basically, they love football. Okay. So with the with the what I call with the academy or, or study together with football is a is a perfect perfect uh, combination for them. I think. Yeah, I think that's uh, what, what's important from our point of view uh, is that we are actually a school, Patrick, with a football academy attached to the side of it. You know, uh, what we don't want to give the impression is that all we do is we're just football, football, football focused. You know, uh, the important thing to understand is that we're a school, education comes first. But if you, you know, attached to that is a football academy that, that helps a lot of as aspiring young players uh, follow their dreams, you know. And uh, if they come into the school, they must deliver their homework on time. Uh, they must study f uh, correctly in class because if they don't, then they don't play football. You know, I think it's always important to uh, for parents to understand that we are a school at the end of the day. Yeah, we are having the same thing. Some of the parents don't allow the kids to come for training if they don't finish their homework. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, you always need that fallback. Yeah, I think we have to balance out uh, in terms of uh, academy and footballing. You see, yeah. and um, yeah, that's what we've been telling telling the player. Uh, our club itself, our, one of our motto is uh, creating the future legends, all right? Yeah. So basically, we try to build the person behind the player. Yeah. yeah, no, that's correct. Well, listen, Patrick, that's all the questions I've got for you. Is there any questions that you want to ask me? Uh, uh, yeah. You know, some of your parents might be interested in, uh, yeah. in what we do at Brookhouse. Yeah, regarding the, we are talking about the academy, how's the distribution of time? How many percent on academy? Or how many percent on the footballing? Or could be a 50-50? Uh, not, no, not really. I mean, like I said before, you know, it's, we, are a, we are a school. So basically the, the children will uh, be in class from 8.30 uh, in the morning until 2.30 uh, in the afternoon. Mm. Um, obviously there's breaks in between and lunch. Uh, and then okay. from 3 o'clock till 5 o'clock, they will be doing football activities. Okay. Now, that is for six days of the week. They get one rest day. Uh, and obviously, right. one day would be game-related uh, as well. All right. Okay, for the boys with a lower skill, they will have their own team. Do they play in a tournament or league? Or any league they play? 
Uh, yeah, all, all, the, all our uh, teams, regardless of the level that they're at, will be in competitive leagues. So we'll either play uh, like-minded schools, we'll be in the college system leagues. Uh, so they will, they will get competitive games regardless of the level that they're at. Okay, on top of the school team, can they play in the amateur league on other clubs? Uh, what, what we try to do is we try to play uh, academy teams, local uh, amateur uh, teams. Uh, and if all the boys will find their level. So if they have an opportunity to play uh, outside of the school, then we will give them that opportunity and find a club that's appropriate for them. Yes. All right. Okay, uh, one of the last one. What is the pathway or journey for the player once they finish the book house? Well, listen, in an ideal world, uh, everybody wants to be a professional footballer, yeah? yeah. So if, I, if I say to all the students, uh, we've got 140 uh, kids in the academy, if I say who wants to be a professional footballer, they'll all put their hands up. Yeah. You know and I know, Patrick, that that journey is very, very uh, difficult to... Uh, and. and for, for them to achieve being a professional footballer is great. That's the ultimate. That's what we all want. The right. likelihood is that they're not going to do that. But what we can do is offer a pathway, either if they're good enough into the professional ranks, because we play uh, professional teams, uh, we do showcase games, and we, uh, and we offer trials, if they're good enough, into professional clubs. All right. If they don't actually achieve that status, what we can do then is, uh, for instance, there's a pathway into the American uh, college system. You know, once again, we offer showcases to the American coaches who come over and have a look at the group of players that we've got and maybe offer scholarships uh, to them. Uh, and if at the end of the day, they don't even follow that route, listen, it's been a great experience for them. Yeah, true. They've if they've uh, been a student of the game. They've got they've got fitter. They've got stronger. They go back to Malaysia, you know, and having uh, studied a different culture, uh, learn uh, English better. Uh, and at the end of the day, we've got something like fifty eight nationalities at the uh, school. Patrick, the mini so think of all the friendships that they might uh, gather. Uh, friendships that last for life, uh, so they'll be they'll be more grounded as individuals, but hopefully better footballers and, like I say, stronger and fitter. So there's a right. pathway for everybody that comes into the school. So basically, uh, Brookhouse also act like an agent, an agent for the player if they are good. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, a lot of players come come to the school with agents attached to them. All right. Yeah. A lot of the African boys have got uh, agents uh, with them, but listen, we, we, we hopefully can help them with all that side of the uh, game. You know, it's a game that a lot of people don't want to talk about because yeah. it's supposed to be, you know, a little bit dark, but, you know, we, we can help them with that, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, in terms of, uh, I mean, some of the, everybody, all of them want to get into the professional uh, football. But unfortunately, I mean, you, you as a head coach, you know some of the boys cannot make it. Do you give them counselling or tell them they can divert their, 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 their pathway to become a left free or, or study sports science or, or certain, certain courses that uh, involve football? Do you do that? Well, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a whole wide infrastructure behind just being a professional footballer. Yep. So yep. the pathway the boys want to do, maybe they're not good enough to be footballers. Maybe they want to be a referee. Maybe yeah. they want to go to a university and study physiotherapy or, or yeah. sports science. Yeah. These are all the pathways that we can offer to them. All right, all right. So you do, on and off, you do give some counselling to the boys, right? Yeah, we're talking Very to good. the boys constantly, you know. And uh, yeah. not like we've said previously, Patrick, not everybody's going to be a professional footballer, but... Within the world of football, there's a whole there's a whole uh, package of of jobs that connected to football that the boys could study for. Yes. Yeah, because the, I think I read two days ago one of the article from uh, UK 
from the club academy, there's only less than 5% going to the first team. It's not easy. They, they got about 95% hanging around outside. So I don't know what they're going to do there. There's a reason I think uh, good counselling will be good for the boys as well. Besides football, you see, what can they do be around the football? Well, as you know, Patrick, there's a tier system in, uh, in, in England in terms of everybody wants to be a, a, a Premier League footballer, but the likelihood <laughs> is that they're not going to be Premier League footballers. But, you know, we have uh, four leagues below the English Premier League that are all that's professional. So, they, yeah. you know, if they're good enough, they'll find a level. And that, that applies to everybody wherever you are in the world. Mm. Right. Uh, and okay. the other last question, sorry, yeah. Huh? If the boys are good in football, but not in ac academy, what you do to them? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, listen, you know, uh, we are a school. You know, we, yeah. uh, we, we need to see that improvement in the classroom. But like very much uh, on, on a football field, we, you know, we need to see small steps and them improving. If they come to the school to study, we expect them to, uh, to work hard, uh, be diligent with their work uh, and improve their grades. So basically, so basically you're monitoring monitor them in terms of football and academy also. Am I right? Absolutely, yes. You know, there's, there's, there's you no go. hiding place for them. <laughs> no shortcut, though? No. There's no shortcuts to, to being a professional footballer. You've got to yeah, do yeah, yeah. the hard graph. You've got to do your work. And it's the same yeah. with education. You know, if you don't spend yeah. time... Yeah. Uh, and, and, and yeah, not a student yeah. that's diligent then you know it becomes very very difficult for you yeah. in fact uh, I think Adam Hamid he came back for holiday uh, he told me that uh, the coaches ask, ask for the homework is every day every day uh, 100,000 touches minimum yeah well yeah this uh, I said no shortcut there's no shortcuts. You have to, you, like I say, you know, you have to work hard at your game. You you have to think about what the coaches are telling you. You have to apply what they what they're showing you and demonstrating to you. Apply that into your own game. Uh, you know, and think it. You know, think about exactly why a coach is talking to you on the level that he's talking to you about the game. Uh, and the ones that 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 take the knowledge in. Uh, quicker will become better. Yeah, yeah. But there's no All shortcut. Right, I think no shortcut. Okay, touch the ball. All right, basically, I think uh, some most of the questions have been uh, brought up uh, from the parents. And um, is there anything else that you want to ask about? I, just want to, I want to thank you on behalf of Brookhouse for, for spending the time talking to us. Um, maybe see you in England one day. Come and have a look at the uh, the school and the academy that we run. And we're looking forward to working with First Eleven, and uh, hope uh, hope we can get some uh, some players over to to England very very shortly. Yeah. Um, once again, thank you very much for the invitation to to talk about Brookhouse and other footballing in uh, Brookhouse. Uh, it's everybody dream to go and study and play football there. Unfortunately, I don't I don't have the luxury during my time. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, like you said, uh, maybe drop by, uh, have a sting there for two weeks. Uh, Learn about your, your football philosophy and uh, what I call the other thing. Yeah, talking about football philo philosophy, do you follow the FA or you have own philosophy in terms of the DNA? Uh, in, ter in, in terms of the DNA, you know, I mean, I think uh, we, we do follow a, a curriculum that's based around uh, the Football Association DNA. Um, but we also have our own principles as well, you know, that uh, has been... Uh, drawn down through years of experience that I have uh, as a former Premier League manager and former Premier League player. Uh, and we have an international array of coaches, you know, they've all got their own little ideas about how it should be run. And listen, that's what football's all about. It's all about opinions. Yep, yep. Between us, we have a DNA uh, set out uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the college uh, in the football academy, and we work to that, but it's very much uh, centered on the English FA, yeah. Yeah, so I think you can have your own World Cup in your college, though. Hopefully, one day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have 58 country there, there's a mini World Cup there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. there's, a, there's a lot of uh, talent 
you know, very, very high standards we have at the, uh, the, at the school. But like I said, Patrick, you know, we find, we find a level for everybody that comes into the school. You know, we, uh, we accept everybody in terms of football and abilities. All right. Good. Boys and and looking, looking forward to visit Brookhouse one day. And also we will invite you, Mickey, uh, maybe have a showcase in Malaysia. Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, I said thanks, Patrick. Want to wish no you worries. all the best. Have a nice Christmas and see you soon. Yep. Thank you very much. And same to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Patrick.